Thank you so much, Mr. President, for giving me the incredible opportunity of opening tonight's debate. This is an issue close to many of our hearts. <laughs> 60 years ago, the UN Convention declared a war on drugs. Today, that war has failed. The proposition will tell you that policy should continue with the way it is. We tell you current policy is irrational, discriminatory, and killing people. No society has ever been or will ever be drug-free, and we will show you that legalization is the best method to regulate the production, consumption, and distribution of these drugs. I think this will maximize their psychological benefits as well as restricting their bodily harm. I think it's outrageous that alcohol is a leading cause of more than 200 diseases and the leading cause of death in men between 16 and 50 years old when the opposition will stand up tonight and they tell you that it is still better for you than cannabis, LSD, ecstasy. This is factually untrue. In 2009, the government's chief drug advisor was sacked for informing a cabinet of well-meaning but misguided politicians of this very fact, something they needed but did not clearly want to hear. We tell you to not make the same mistakes tonight. Listen to evidence, listen to facts, listen to logic. I will frame the contours of this debate with three main points. The, le the legalizing drugs minimizes their harm and use, the current laws are racially based and ineffective, and lastly, I will talk about the potential positives of free personal use. But before I continue, the honor falls on me of introducing the speakers of side opposition. You will first hear from Nadia Angela Betti, a second year biologist from Hartford College. As our incredible director of communications, Nadia's addiction is social media. Though, I am surprised Nadia walked up tonight, considering she has attended a total of one lectures this term. <laughs> Nadia is also my college wife and one of my best friends who I deeply admire. As a biologist, Nadia has an affinity for plants. In fact, many have mistaken her bedroom as the local weed farm. <laughs> I very much look forward to Nadia's speech tonight, though if you have any questions to her afterwards, be sure to find her in the British smoking area where she has become a permanent resident, or perhaps at Tuck Shop on Hollywood Street where her local e dealer knows her on a first name basis. Secondly, you shall hear from Abigail Bacon, a second year history and politics student from Brasenose College. Abigail is an immensely talented and well-respected member of committee. She is also our chief custodian. Though, unlike her predecessor, I hope she won't be caught sniffing caffeine tablets at the next union ball. <laughs> last, term, last term, Abby worked with an Oxford-based theatre and film company, Not Term Productions, as one of their welfare officers. I sincerely hope that side proposition, uh, proposition's arguments don't leave her seeking her own services and that Ms. Bacon won't end up out of the frying pan and into the fire tonight. <laughs> Mr. President, these are your guest speakers and they are most welcome. <laughs> On to the debate. Firstly, legalizing the drugs reduces their harm to the individual and to society. They tell you that legalizing drugs will increase their use, with big meth, big cannabis, big ecstasy sweeping society. This looks like a lie. No nation, state, society, or country has ever found a compelling correlation between legalization of a substance and an increase in its use. In fact, in America, rates of drug use skyrocketed when criminalized. The same is true of Russia, of Finland, of Canada, of Czech Republic, whilst in Amsterdam and Portugal, legalization led to a decrease in marijuana use. More importantly, they tell us that drugs are illegal because they are harmful. We believe drugs are harmful because they are illegal. Let's look at heroin, an often injected opiate. Needles from injection transmit HIV, hepatitis C, or other blood-borne diseases. Heroin can be smoked. It is injected because in an unregulated, illegal free market of drugs, Powdered heroin is often so impure to cut costs for dealers that users resort to injection for a purer form. Heroin itself is a safe drug. When regulated, the difference between therapeutic levels and fatal levels of heroin is wider than the therapeutic and fatal dose of paracetamol. 
We believe when things are legal and regulated, they are far more safe. Let's take ecstasy. I think it's outrageous that they will tell you that drugs like ecstasy are inherently harmful. People do not die from ecstasy. People die from ecstasy alternatives like PMA and PMMA, which were made simply because attempts to prohibit MDMA were successful. So producers switch from using sassafras oil to linseed oil to smuggle them through borders, which is far more toxic. In this case study, it caused hundreds of needless yet devastating deaths in our country. If MDMA was available in a regulated fashion, almost none of them would have died. The same is true of the relationship between cocaine and crack cocaine, as well as crystal meth. For a less arduous smuggle across borders, these drugs are altered in a far more toxic way. We say that any policy which puts drug production into the hands of gangs is not one which we can support. When people who sell drugs do so in an absolutely underground free market, there is nothing to stop them lying about the product they are selling, nothing to stop them abusing those who are taking it. There is nothing to stop them from selling it to the most vulnerable people, including children. These are all things the state is good at stopping. We think it is disgraceful that addicts face imprisonment when they have done nothing to anyone else, when they are not a threat to society, when they need help. We think that when you take someone who is most likely using because of trauma or mental health and put them in a cage, it is the most horrible and ineffective thing that can be done. In fact, 87% of prison inmates in the UK consume drugs. So, if you don't want people to take drugs, stop sending them to prison. To the girl in Camden, groomed since the age of 11 to deal drugs. To the teenage boy in Brixton, who carries a knife with him every day to school because of drug-related gang violence to the mother of two kids who prostitutes herself to feed her heroin addiction. We believe we should interact with people with help, compassion, support, and empowerment. Criminal law does not do this. We believe the stigma which comes from illegal drugs does as much damage as the drugs do themselves. When drugs are a crime, you are much more likely to take drugs incredibly secretly. You are much more likely to be that much further away from the ambulance that much further away from a hospital, that much further away from the medical care that you will need if you are actually having an overdose. They say it is irresponsible to legalize drugs for personal use, but we already have places where you can buy mind-altering, addictive, and dangerous drugs legally. Supermarkets, pubs, the union bar. I think all substances can be dangerous, but regulation is how you handle those dangers, not prohibition. Around 40% of people who consume tobacco become addicted, 25% for heroin, 10% for alcohol, and 4% for cannabis. This means we have legal drugs which are more addictive than illegal drugs. We believe it is morally wrong to not only be, to only be able to legally consume alcohol and tobacco when there are less harmful drugs we could be consuming. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring you to the example of Colorado. When marijuana was legalized, there was an 18% reduction in alcohol-related car accidents. Next, I believe criminalizing drugs has a disproportionate impact on minority groups. We think there is no, that it is no convenience that drugs which, is, which were historically associated with the white middle class, tobacco and alcohol, are the ones that conveniently remain legal, despite being worse for your health. At the end of the day, only those intoxicants which remain publicly associated with Asian, black, or other ethnic minorities remain illegal. I think there is a racism built into the very idea of how we see a drug today. More importantly, this racism remains at the very core of how the law is applied today. When there is no evidence that black people sell or use more drugs than white people, I think it's outrageous that in the UK, black people are nine times more likely to be stopped and searched, six times more likely to be arrested, 11 times more likely, yes, 11 times more likely to be sent to prison than a white person for drug-related offences. At the end of the day, the criminalization of drugs has a disproportionate persecution on minorities. Lastly, I want to bring you to the empir empirical benefits of drugs. The opposition will address you with moralistic overtones, that if you do drugs, you are seemingly a bad person. We realize that drugs cannot be eradicated from society, despite a war on them because there are positives to them. Pleasure, leisure, relaxation, creativity, philosophical exploration. But perhaps more importantly, we tell you that many illegal drugs have enormous therapeutic utility. When cannabis can treat pain, spasticity, cancer, epilepsy, inflammatory diseases, 
when MDMA can reverse decades-long PTSD from war, conflict, or serious life incidences, when psilocybin and LSD can treat depression through increased brain connectivity, it is outrageous that the 1961, 71, and 88 UN conventions allowed the most oppressive restraints on medical research in history. It is ridiculous that we, or our parents or grandparents, cannot access drugs of enormous potential utility um, as treatments because the UN fallaciously believed they would stop their recreational use. And almost all politicians involved in the convention now advocate for the legalization of drugs worldwide themselves. The war on drugs was a catastrophic failure, but now we know better. So, what is our policy? Simply, simple, legalization of small use for personal possession, bought at pharmacies, of biochemically pure and safe quantities, regulations, information labels, education sessions with pharmacists before you buy, and addiction centers for those who need it most. So, what is our aim? Simple, minimize drug harm, destigmatize drug use, eradicate violent drug markets, and encourage therapeutic medical research. Current law criminalizes drugs and victimizes the poorest. These laws don't make people take drugs. They do cause for more deaths. They're incredibly immoral. They are incredibly counterproductive. I heavily implore you to, to propose.